Today I'm going to be talking about The Last Five Years, an off-Broadway musical that was eventually made into a movie in 2014. This movie is significant because it's a prime example of a low-budget musical and what you can do with that budget. As somebody that's not rich or famous, I will likely be making a low-budget movie. The first thing that I think they got right was casting Jeremy Jordan. Jeremy Jordan was born and raised in Texas, and by 33, he's become one of the most recognizable faces in Broadway. He's Jewish. His first Broadway show was Rock of Ages in 2009, but he's most recognizable for his role as Jack Kelly in The Newsies. This change coming once and for all you makes the front page and man you is major news. I personally liked him best as Jimmy the bad boy in season two of Smash. So finally I get to like the last few pages and I turn, okay there I am again, okay so they're gonna finish out the episode with me, it's gonna be like some crazy cliffhanger or something, and I look at the last page and it's just, it's just lyrics. I'm like okay, so they're gonna end up with a song naturally, it's a musical television show, and I look at the top of the lyrics and it says Jimmy. And I, 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 and I realized in that moment that I was going to get to sing the closing song of my very first television episode ever, and it was the coolest, coolest experience ever. To the street that I'm from, oh Broadway, here I come. He's clearly talented and dedicated, but I think most importantly, he can play a jerk. A lot of actors only want to play the good guy, like his pioneering labor rights activist role, Jack Kelly. But he can also play the guy who's just wrong. His character, Jamie, in this movie, to say the least, is a jerk. To say the most, he's a cheating bastard. The second thing they did right was casting Anna Kendrick. Anna Kendrick made her Broadway debut in 1998 in High Society. She was only 13 years old. Clearly, I grew up on the wrong coast. I appreciate that she accepted this role at all, because it was after her Twilight role and after her big Pitch Perfect breakout role. I just love how expressive she is. However she feels, you feel. Whether she's being charming and kind or completely devastated. What about lies, Jamie? What about things that you swore to be true? What about you, Jamie? What about you? The third thing they did right that I love was all the musical theater cameos. Jeremy Jordan's wife played the receptionist that he cheats on Anna Kendrick with. His wife, Ashley Spencer, is also a Broadway actress. Betsy Wolf, who plays Kathy, Anna Kendrick's character in the off-Broadway production, comes into this movie as the stripper. The composer and writer of this story, Jason Robert Brown, also makes a cameo playing piano for Kathy's audition. The director even makes an appearance fitting Jeremy Jordan for a suit. The fourth thing this movie does right is live singing. I'm a big believer in live singing, and while I understand that that can't work in every single musical movie, because sometimes there's dance choreo where people are yelling things at you as you're doing actions, so therefore you have to have pre-recorded tracks, in this movie, most of their movements were pretty stagnant. 11 of the 13 songs performed in this movie were done live, and poor Anna Kendrick had to do I'm Still Hurting nearly 17 times. Les Miserables gets a lot of credit for doing their singing live. And I wish more shows would do it, because as Neil Patrick Harris says... Can I have my uh, Tom Hooper Les Mis close-up, please? <laughs> See, on Broadway, we don't need extreme close-ups to prove we're singing live. We sing live eight shows a week. Check it. Number five, that it's based on a true story. Jason Robert Brown based this story on his actual marriage and divorce to his ex-wife. And I haven't seen the original play myself, but I've heard it's not very flattering to his ex-wife because she sued his ass. And they changed her name and a lot of her songs and a lot of her character, which is probably why Kathy comes across pretty saintly. Number six, I love the unique storytelling of this show. If you haven't seen it, his story is being told forwards while her story is being told backwards and they only intersect once in the middle during the proposal and wedding section. And it's really interesting because you're watching her slowly fall back in love with someone and you're watching him slowly fall out of love with someone. Now we're gonna talk about why I'm making this video. We're gonna talk about the budget! This movie was made for two million dollars and to a lot of non-filmmaking people, two million dollars sounds like a lot of money. But to be perfectly honest, when you take in paying cast, crew, production costs, insurance, renting equipment, and all of that stuff, it adds up really quickly. Which means Jeremy Jordan and Anna Kendrick probably accepted a pretty low rate just to do this 
this movie. To put it into perspective, Greatest Showman was made for 84 million, Into the Woods 50 million, La La Land 30 million, and even High School Musical was made for 5 million. So to make this movie for only 2 million, they must have cut corners in a lot of places, using smaller sets and more basic costumes and paying the lowest rate that they could legally pay for union roles, such as actors and crew members. I personally grew up with less money, so I see the importance and significance of doing more with less. Unfortunately, it did not make its money back. It only made about 500k, including domestic and international sales, video on demand streaming services, and DVD. But to be totally honest, the critics were wrong. They said this movie was too simple. But that's what musicals are. They're very simple. There's not a lot of subplot. There's not a lot of distraction. It's just a simple story, and in this case, between two characters, where you can see a lot of passion and a lot of chemistry without all the frills. The Last Five Years is one of my favorite musical films, and I think it's a great inspiration and goal to have when making a low-budget musical film. 